No worries if I look a little bit rough. My hair and all that, you know. Uh, the last day of the year. Look at that. This is the very last day of 2019. Ooh. Ooh. Good morning. Got my coffee. New Year's Eve 2019. The year's gone by. Yeehaw. Okay, the grandeur of God's purpose. I'm going to read about Stephen today. This article is called Stephen and Paul. Scene 10. Our next picture is a miniature in the sense that it is centered around two individuals. But it is a very important one. For it portrays an incident which had tremendous consequences. One of the two people mainly concerned is standing before a hostile crowd of his own countrymen. His name is Stephen and he has just delivered a stirring address in which he has outlined the history of his people down the centuries, beginning with the promises made to their fathers, upon which all their expectations as a nation were based. But his address has not been a flattering one. He has not hesitated to show how succeeding generations turned away from God. For example, in disowning Moses as their leader, in their sacrifices to a calf, made by hands, and in their worship of the gods of the heathen nations. And he has just concluded by telling his hearers that they are no better than their predecessors, for they have just murdered the, that greater prophet whom Moses had spoken of. <coughs> this, accus this accusation, true though it was, angered the listeners very much. But while they were still con contemplating what to do, there was a remarkable development. For we read in Acts 7, verses 55 and 56, that Stephen, possessing the fullness of faith and Holy Spirit and looking intently into heaven, perceived the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Lo, I am beholding the heavens open up and the Son of Man, Mankind standing at the right hand of God. What Stephen saw was the sign promised to Jesus to indicate his second coming, to set up his kingdom, the Son of Mankind in heaven. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. When this sign is seen by all the tribes of the land, the Lord will be about to come. When Stephen saw, what Stephen saw was a preview of this sign, with the Lord standing as though ready to come. But the representatives of the nations were neither ready nor willing to receive him. On the contrary, they pressed their ears so that they should not hear no more. And to their part, and to their part in the murder of Jesus, they rushed to add the murder of his messenger, Stephen. On the cross, Jesus had prayed concerning those who were assassinating him. Father, forgive them, for they, for they are not aware what they are doing. Luke chapter 23, verse 34, the Lord's prayer was answered. For the kingdom was, in effect, reoffered through the twelve apostles, beginning with Peter's statement on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39. With the murder of Stephen, the leaders of the Jews showed their contempt for this offer. The hope of the kingdom gradually receded, and a door of salvation opened to the nations. Acts chapter 28, verse 23 through 28. Stephen's prayer was diff different from that of the Lord. Whereas Jesus had asked for his murderers to be forgiven, Stephen asked that the sin should not even be charged against them. Both of these prayers were in accord with the purpose of God at the time they were uttered. Stephen is described as being filled with five things. The only person in scripture so described, though others may have possessed all these graces. Namely, Holy Spirit, wisdom, faith, grace, and power. Acts chapter 6, verse 3, 5, and 8. In Acts chapter 7, verses 55, 
It is again stressed that he possessed the fullness of faith and Holy Spirit when he saw the vision of the Lord standing at the right hand of God. A man so inspired by God's Spirit must have thoughts in accord with God's purpose at that time. And although Stephen would not be aware of the, fa that, of the fact, his prayer opened the air of absolute grace. Saul of Tarsus, the second man in our picture, stood by, endorsing the murder of Stephen. He was the principal and most rabbit of the persecutors of the disciples of Jesus. He was truly the foremost of sinners, yet he was the first to receive such grace. For he was never charged with, the, with his offenses. Quite the contrary. In fact, as we shall see in our next scene. Tomorrow, scene 11. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful new year. Have a prosperous new year according to God's will. It's all his will. The next year coming up. I make no resolutions on this earth because they're useless. I love you all.